Have you ever been told you're too picky and that's the reason you're still single? Well, in today's episode, we're gonna dig into how to tell if you're being too picky and if you're qualifying potential romantic prospects too harshly for your own good. I'm Emily, I'm co-founder and head coach at mloves.com. And in 2012, I went on a 100 date experiment. Research from that experiment helped me to create my coaching program, which I now help single men and women to find love. And we have people getting married every day. If you wanna learn more, check out my website at mloves.com. But first, let's talk about how to tell if you're being too picky. The number one way to tell if you're being too picky is if you at some point in your life were told to create a checklist of what you really wanted in an ideal partner. And on that checklist, instead of characteristics that relate to the person's kindness and thoughtfulness, you put checklists like must be six feet tall, must be CEO, must be this race, must be this religion, must have this political preference, must want this many kids, must not hate dogs, must uh, all of these things, right? And so if we have this list that's based on physical characteristics and based on ego-driven preferences like job title, income, I see that a lot with women, must make $200,000 and be 24 years old. That's almost impossible, just so you know. It's almost no one will meet that criteria. So yes, you're being too picky, but here's why you're being too picky if you're using ego-driven benchmarkers like that. Because love has nothing to do with a person's height, with what's in their bank account and you know, with where they went to school and all of these things. Yes, of course, if you're intelligent, you're gonna be looking for an intelligent partner. Yes, of course, every woman wants a guy who has his finances together. But if we try and use that type of criteria first to determine who we're gonna match with, we're gonna find that we, we date people who on paper are great, but we really don't feel a connection to. So what I encourage you to do instead, and just know I used to be in your same position, but before I did my 100 date experiment, my criteria was must be Latino because I didn't want to date a white boy because I came from the suburbs and all the boys were white and they never were into me. And so I developed a complex where I thought, oh, the white men are not going to be, you know, whatever. I, I created something fictitious in my head. I also said, oh, he has to dance because if he doesn't like to dance, that's my favorite thing to do. So I'm not going to date anyone who doesn't dance. He must be six feet tall so I can wear my heels and not feel like a, a giant, right? He must be this political preference because Lord knows I wouldn't get along with somebody who didn't match every single thing that I thought. Now, I ended up with a partner who was not that height, who was not a CEO, who was not Latino, who was none of these things. And the only reason I was open to dating other people outside of my very narrow parameters that were ego driven and status based was because I did a 100 date experiment. I used mega dating, which is the process of going on a lot of dates in a short period of time. And something I now teach my students going on 20 dates in 90 days. And it really opened me up to dating people I had never considered before. So I intentionally dated people from other races other religions, other political preferences, people from different parts of the world that I never would have considered before, you know, and, and it tested all of my biases and made me realize that not only do people have a lot more in common than you think, even if they don't match this criteria that you determined in some checklist that you found online, but that is not a good way to qualify potential candidates, right? Just because I went to Cal doesn't mean I am only going to get along with another person who went to a school at that threshold, right? My husband went to a different school. He is probably smarter than me in a lot of ways, but if I had been really narrowed in on that superficial criteria, I would have been so closed off to the very perfect partner for me. So yes, you're being too picky if you're qualifying people by things like their income, their height, their race, their religion, their political preference. Now studies show that sharing the same religion and the same political preferences are conducive to making a relationship work. But I would challenge you to just test your assumptions because a lot of times we think I would never get along with somebody who loves this candidate, right? And Thomas and myself, my husband, we don't share the same political preferences. We happen to be similar, but we do not agree on everything. And if I had only been narrowly looking for somebody who was also this you know, political party, which by the way, mine has changed, right? Then I would have been completely wiping out a lot of people that I'm actually super compatible with. So if 
you haven't been dating that many people and your criteria is super hardcore and it's all superficial, you're wiping away so many opportunities for connection. And true connection comes from how somebody treats you and how you feel when you're with them. I learned through my 100 date experiment, through the process of mega dating, that when I open myself up to dating people outside of this very narrow scope, that my criteria changed. And rather than looking only for someone who is six feet tall and Latino and who could dance and who is CEO, or a professional athlete, that actually my criteria was kindness and thoughtfulness and great listener and present and socially capable, like has great social skills, street smart, thinks outside the box. Those type of things is what should be on your list, but your list should not exist if you haven't given yourself the opportunity to have enough experiences with people. So especially if you're like, I've never dated before and here's my list, or I haven't been on a date in three years, or I'm coming out of a divorce and I don't want them to be anything like my ex. So they can't be white and they can't be this religion and they can't be this and they can't have kids. You're, you're narrowing the playing field before you actually find the connection and before you actually learn about yourself and what is truly important, what we think is important versus what actually becomes like very important criteria, it comes from our own experience. And if you don't have enough experience and you just think, oh, well, they have to match these, you know, qualifications and if they don't, I'm not dating, you're going to find yourself always unhappy because the very few times that someone meets that very superficial criteria, you probably find that you have no connection because it's actually not what leads to a deep, meaningful, emotional connection. I'm gonna leave you with this story. One of my my first ever student who's become one of my good friends told me when he met me, he's like, I'm never gonna date a woman who doesn't love cats. You know, if she's allergic to cats, I won't even date her, right? And he's uh, atheist and he said, I'll never date a woman who is religious. And he had all these criteria. And he ended up, I stood in his wedding in 2022. He ended up marrying a woman who's super religious, who's allergic to cats, and they live together and they're such the perfect couple for one another because what he found was, actually what's really important to me is, is an intellectual connection, is that we share these things in common, that when we travel, we both love to go to museums and talk about the culture. And there's these things that are so important to you that you just don't know until you give yourself enough experiences to really determine that. So if you're feeling like you're too picky, I'm going to challenge you, take your list, First of all, take your list, light it on fire, but take your list and eliminate anything that's superficial. So if it has to do with someone's income or their height or their race or their religion or their political preferences, intentionally go date those people that you say in your mind, I would never get along with a Trump lover. I would never get along with a Biden lover. I would never get along with someone who's allergic to cats. Intentionally go and date them so that you can find out from your own life experience if your bias is supported if your hypothesis is supported by data from your own experience. And if you're using a, an X to guide your experience, one X, and you're like, oh, I'll never date somebody like this because she's like my ex. I would also intentionally date someone like that just to see if it's true. Are all women who are this way, you know, like like how I felt, oh, all white men are, are going to be this way. Well, I ended up married a white guy, you know? If I had really continued to believe that limiting belief that came from childhood, and just a, a, just a weird experience, then I, I would have never met my husband. That wraps up this video, guys. If you like this video, make sure to like it, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment in the comments below, tell me how your mega dating journey is going, and follow us on social media. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you next time.